and welcome to Code Harvest. In this video, we will be creating the about page of an online clothing store. This is part three of Code Harvest's web series, so please check out part one and part two if you haven't. Links are in the description down below, and let's get started. So first, let's head over to our HTML page in VS Code. Um, as you can see, I have already set the navigation bar and it resembles the one in the products page except um, color differences. And so now let's head over here and create a new div. Okay, so first we're going to create a new div inside of that div and make an ID that we're going to call sec1. You can name um, your ID anything you want, but I'm going to name Alice Sect 1 to stand for Section 1. And next, uh, we're going to include another div. Um, this is not necessary, but I just want to darken the image of um, the image that I'm going to be using for this um, for the about page. So I'll just call it dark opacity and. So here's what we want to do, we want to lay out an image right here with um, full width but we want the height to be limited to about this much, so about like 500 pixels, 400 pixels, um, maybe 600 pixels. So let's head over to our CSS file and include the properties that we might need for the image. Okay, so set one background image. Um, I've already pre-downloaded a few images that we're going to be using. And we want to make sure that our background covers the whole div. And we also want to make sure that our background does not repeat itself. And in order to you know, showcase the image, we're going to have to set the height and width. So with 100% height, I believe should be 40 pH. Okay, so let's reload this page and let's see full screen. It looks fine. Um, it kind of looks better in this view, so we'll just fix that in a moment. And now let's create uh, the dark opacity class. And this is not necessary once again, I just want to darken the image because I think this one's too bright. Um, RGBA 000 and I'll set it to 0.2 and height to be 100. Okay, so now I personally think that's much better. So let's move on to creating our second div. And in our second div, we're just going to call the ID sect 2. And in this, we're going to um, include a line. So basically, you see there are websites with um, small lines with limited width. So let me just show you. So let me create a new class. We're going to call it order. And in the border properties, we're just going to add border um, top to, no, sorry, yeah, to px solid hd 664 e And we're going to keep the width to about 70 pixels. We also want this to be text aligned to the center of the page or um, actually let's use margin auto. So let's go back here, make sure that everything is set, and let's also include our sec2 properties. So we want, what do we want? Uh, we want um, the, any text that we're going to add to be aligned to the center of the page and also, we want a margin top of 2 rem and margin bottom of 2 rem as well. Actually, let's increase that to 3 rem and let's increase the amount of pixels to 3 pixels. And I personally think that it's 
that looks much better. And I'll just increase the width to 80 pixels. All right, um, so let's go back to our HTML page and let's include our header. We're just going to call it our purpose. And next, we are going to include our text. So I'm just going to copy and paste some lorem ipsum text right here. Okay, um, so now the um, text is projected and we're just going to create a new ID and we'll call it um, purpose txt. the purpose text properties and now we're gonna head over here and change um, the properties of the title all right um, and now we are going to individually set the style to a certain width sorry width personally think this is much better. Okay. So this looks much, much better. And now we are going to head over to our, our second div and we are going to be doing the same thing but, you know, different titles and different elements. Instead of creating, you know, different sets with basically the same properties but different names, I just decided to create this and call this sect. Oh, okay, well there is a class called section, but uh, we'll just call this section okay, either way. And I'll just uh, edit this and edit this right here. So let's check out the page now. Okay, so our plan is to do some, I mean to include some images in white boxes such as this right here. So we're going to include white boxes of images and text included where, you know, each image is um, labeled with numbers. So one, two, until six. We're going to add six images and we're going to add their names. So something similar to what we did for our products page. We will not need to include the price. All right, let's go. Okay, so now you can see I have just created um, the image and the white box. So now let's head over to our CSS file and execute. Um, I mean, sorry, edit the properties of our class profile, profile class, and our design profile. Okay, um, so I think we have that set, and now we're just going to um, edit the design, the image, because it seems like it's a little too big. So, design profile greater than image, so the image inside of design profile, we are going to keep a width of 300 pixels and a height of 400 pixels. Okay, so now that is set, we are just going to copy paste everything six times, or I mean five more times, but include different images. All right. Um, so now we have included all our all of our images. We have edited um, the what the ranking, you know, from top to bottom. And now we are going to um, 
include the hovering effect that we did for our products page. So let's go here oh, and put designer profile hover. And so when you know we, when we hover that, we want to wait first. We want a transition, a smooth transition of 0.5 seconds up. Okay. And we also want um, the images to transform and we want it to scale by 1.15. And another thing is, oh yeah, we want the border radius to increase by 20 pixels. Okay, so let's go back to our about page and create our last div. So we're going to be using the same class that we used for profile. So basically we're creating a flex environment. And so let me go here and create our last div. And now we are going to include another div. So we're going to include the background, I mean, not the background, the border. So the small little line. And next, we are going to name our last page heading to Founders. And right here, we're going to create a new class and we're going to call it Founder Section. And inside this, we are going to create another div. <laughs> and um, create some images, I mean, in, uh, you know, insert some images that we're going to be using as faces for, you know, for our founders. So, um, mine, I, I've kept mine in images, team profiles, with my one, so that's just an example. Okay, so that looks much better. Um, we're also going to create a little text that says, you know, their names. So I'll just say Robinson, I don't know, Robinson Wander. And we're going to create a title for them. And I'll just say Founder Executive Share. And with that, I'm going to include a class that I call Founder Name. And another class that says founder title. So I'm just going to be editing all the, you know, the style of the text. And we are also going to have to change, you know, the properties of founder section. So let's head over here. And I, that should be a class. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm just going to copy and paste this three times and include the other profile pictures and put random names. So the last two images are women, so I'm just going to say Samantha Whale and Elizabeth Dolly. So it seems that I'll also need to copy and paste this here so that each half has a margin bug of 3 RAM. So now let's check the full screen. Okay, so it looks all, uh, it looks much better, but I'll just reduce this to 1 RAM. Okay, um, and also we need, we need to change uh, we need to change the properties of founder name and founder title. So let's head over here and include a few properties. Okay, so it looks much better. Um, I'm just going to keep a margin bottom between because I feel like the images are too close to the text. Okay, so um, actually, we just like to five ten. Okay, 
So that looks much better. Um, we have completed the whole web page. And now, last but not least, we will create the parallax scrolling effect that I have promised in the beginning of the video. So let's scroll up, up to sec 1. And let's include here background attachment. All we have to do is type in fixed. And now when we, and also the image looks better now. And when we scroll down, we see that the image stays fixed while everything else scrolls down, which is what we wanted to um, achieve. Now, this is very optional, but if you want to include this, we can make our, you know, our website, or you know, I mean our about page much more design, you know, designy, you know, designful. Right here, we're just going to include a few properties. So all you need to do is include border, oh no, sorry, border, left, I think it's bottom left, sorry, and 50%. And I'll just copy this and paste this here, but I'm going to type in right 50%. So as you can see, the image looks more round. And yeah, I'm just going to increase this to 45 VH. And we also have to um, make the opacity background round as well. And now that you can see um, the image, I mean, sorry, the top part of our about page looks more round. So it looks a little different than usual and once again this is optional so we have created all of the above the parallax rolling effect the aim our top designs and our founders now if you enjoyed this video please remember to give this a like and if you haven't subscribed yet please do and hit the notification bell in order to so that you won't miss any videos in these web series there are six videos in this web series this is part three. Make sure you check out part one and part two if you haven't already and see you in the next video.